So we have a lot of questions when it comes to our health. I mean, clearly, we want to do the right thing by our body and by our family's bodies. The twin doctors are back to break down what is myth and what is a healthy fact. Yeah, and Drs. Idris and Jamil Abdurrahman, also known as Dr. I and Dr. J, are here. Uh, one at the table, one on Zoom. Um, <laughs> you but, guys are busy. Uh, this is the best day of my life. I finally <laughs> shook them. I finally shook them. <laughs> oh, my god! You're gosh. never going to be able to shake your twin. <laughs> I know. Uh, that's too good. <laughs> hey, before we get to our usual true or false, which we do with y'all every week, we do want to ask you about the FDA approving the first non-prescription birth control over-the-counter pill. This is called the O-Pill. Um, your thoughts on it, and is this a good move for patients? Uh, so the uh, sorry, I'm Dr. Sorry. I's like, let me jump <laughs> in right <laughs> now. So no, actually the O-Pill is a great thing. So the O-Pill is the first over-the-counter birth control pill. And we here in the U.S. are a little bit behind the eight ball. There are over 100 countries where it's already approved. But the beauty of the O-Pill is that it provides access to contraception to way more people. You don't have to go see a doctor. Not great for us. We missed that copay. But mm -hmm. you don't have to go see a doctor. Um, and it provides good, effective birth control to people who otherwise may not have had access to it. So it's a great thing, in my opinion. What about you, Dr. J? I know I, you're thinking. Yeah, I don't disagree for the most part, but the one concern is people aren't going to be seeing their doctor as often. Mm -hmm. And there are other things we need to worry about than contraception. You know, we need yeah. to be testing for certain sexually transmitted infections. We need to be testing for cancers. And one of the things that gets a lot of folks into the office is that birth control pill. And so even though it starts with that, it leads to other things that may get missed. Um, also, this point. pill, you have to be super accurate with it. Most of the prescription pills have some leeway. You can miss a day. You can miss two days. We don't encourage it, but you can. This pill, you have to take it every day, same time. And so um, you see higher failure rates as well. So there are some concerns, but overall, probably a good thing. But I like okay. the point that you brought up that it's a calling card. Yeah. Because somebody might not come in because they don't want to know if they're sick with something. <laughs> exactly. They're kind of afraid, oh, God, exactly. I don't want to know if Ignorance I have an STD. Right, right. Yeah. They don't want to know, but, but they want that birth control. They want to have birth you know? control. Yeah. So once like, you have them in there. We're like, now that you're here. They can get exactly. that head to toe checkup. Doors locked. <laughs> yeah, no, that's wise. Uh, let's get to the true or false uh, about today and chicken. Oh, should gosh. It be washed before it is cooked. I say true because I happen to do this. <laughs> I say false because I don't do it, and I'm hoping okay. I'm correct. And the answer is false. I will not be coming to your house right. with chicken. So you absolutely <laughs> do not want to cook the chicken. So this is the thing. When you cook the chicken, all of those particles, particularly salmonella, kind of go from the chicken to other things on the counter. So you could theoretically contaminate other foods. Um, so if you cook your chicken well, you want to cook it to at least a temperature of 160, 165 degrees, use that meat thermometer, then you should be covered. And while salmonella for most of us causes like, you know, diarrhea, things that aren't necessarily fun for a few days, for some people that are immunocompromised, it can leave... <laughs> Two percent. So yeah, you definitely want to not cook that chicken. Just cook it well. Okay. Not cook. The, you mean Washington. not clean the chicken? Yeah, cl clean it. Please cook it. Yeah. Please cook it thoroughly. Yeah, but you don't have to clean it. Okay. Uh, you shouldn't drink alcohol before an intense workout. <laughs> Hello. I'm guessing it, I better be true. I think that's a layup. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to do that. That was our giveaway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. There's a couple of reasons. Number one, if you're working out drunk, you're prone to injuries. Let's be real. But number two, alcohol is a diuretic. So you tend to urinate a lot after you've had alcohol. And so you tend to dehydrate yourself before the workout, throw off your electrolytes. You can start to get cardiac arrhythmias, cramping. It's just a mess. But also, your liver has to detoxify the alcohol. And when you're working out, your liver makes the glucose that you use to work out. So if your liver is busy detoxifying the alcohol, you don't make as much glucose. You also don't clear the lactic acid, which is that metabolic byproduct from working out that makes you feel sore. So you just have a bad workout, higher risk of uh, uh, arrhythmias, just uh, all around. Why, would you, why would you want to work out after drinking a lot of alcohol? I guess it makes it a lot less painful up here, but more painful down there, you know? Okay, well, let's, let's get to this next question. Lack of sleep can cause you to lose your hearing. I want to say false, but I'm going to say true gonna say because true. I think that you're distracted <laughs> when you're sleepy, like, so you can't process anything. We say huh? true. Huh? Really? It's true. <laughs> well, that true. is actually true. It's true. That is actually true. I'm probably in my last year of hearing, but lack of sleep absolutely can cause hearing loss. And this is what happens during sleep, especially during REM sleep, you are regenerating those neurons, you're regenerating those nerve cells in the brain and in the spinal cord, and you're also producing certain neurotransmitters. And so when you're not getting good sleep, when you're not getting that REM sleep, you're not getting the, the regeneration of those neurons and the production of those neurotransmitters that are responsible for the auditory center in your brain. So it absolutely can cause hearing loss. All right. Oh. Gosh, another thing to worry about. I know, right? Uh, this one's interesting. We do not breathe equally through both nostrils. One nostril's dominant, the other is passive. I'm going to say true. That seems 
So weird. I don't even want to answer this question. Off. I don't know. I'll say false just to be different. That's actually true. It's okay. true. So at any one time, one nostril is doing about 80% of the breathing, the other one 20%. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.